In this video, I show you the Jakota L1 10 watt diode laser. But before we get into today's video, I just want to share with you what the GGGGs are for this month. Each month, Bob the Beholder picks some of my Patreon supporters to receive gratitude gifts. And for this month of March of 2023, we have a $50 credit towards Terrainify. They provide STL files or they can print them out for you and they can also paint and flock it for you. If you haven't seen my video, make sure to check it out here for more details. There are two $25 credits towards LV427 with some sci-fi terrain. Also, I have a channel code to get 20% off, so use that on your first order from LV427. Use the links below in the descriptions to check out their website. We have this printed and painted Highlands Rebellion Outpost from DecoQuest. We also have two pledges for that current Kickstarter. We have $100 to go towards a crowdfunding campaign, which my Patreon supporters are currently voting upon. And finally, this $500 laser is also going to be one of the gratitude gifts. So if you want to get in on the possibility of being chosen by Bob the Beholder, go ahead and use the link below to go to my Patreon page, where it only takes a dollar to join to have that chance. Now, the makers of Jakota did reach out to me and send this laser to me in order to do a review. They also sent me this honeycomb bed, which is really handy, as well as an air pump in order to hook up. Now, I did not test out the air pump. Mostly, I wanted to get this video out quickly, so I only used the honeycomb bed as well as the laser. I've done a couple of other videos, so make sure to check out my playlist if you're interested in checking out uh, CO2 lasers as well as some diode lasers. But right off the bat, I do want to say that I think these diode lasers, as they become more and more powerful, are the cheaper and easier option if you do want to get into lasers. I did this whole video about getting a cheap Chinese CO2 laser, which without all of the upgrades cost about $1,500. So it is substantially more to get a large bed CO2 laser. But actually for most hobbyists, I think getting a diode laser is more economical as well as easier to use. So as you can see here, this laser only takes up this much space and yet it has a larger volume that it can laser and cut and engrave into than even my 50 watt. So that's something to consider and as the technology advances, um, I really would suggest to most people that they get a diode laser over a much larger CO2 laser. Now this was really easy to put together. I think I had it all together within 30 minutes and that is relatively standard for these types of diode lasers and it did ship with a 10 watt uh, laser. I do know that they have a 5 watt version. I don't know if they have anything higher than the 10 watt but definitely get the 10 watt. I think it's worth getting the uh, more powerful laser than the 5 watt. Really only get the 5 watt if you are mostly doing engraving rather than cutting because as it is even with the 10 watt it will take a number of passes to be able to cut through thicker material. One of the features of the Jakota is that you have this emergency stop button that you can press in case you need to really stop things. It does have a flame sensor. Now I did turn down my flame sensor significantly because I found that it was too sensitive and it was going off when there wasn't actually flame. There is flare ups that is common with most of these diode lasers, especially if you don't have an air pump connected to it but um, it was shutting off a lot. So I did actually reach out to the manufacturer. They taught me how to turn it down. There is a little screw head right in here that you can turn down the sensitivity. And to be honest, I turned it off completely. Now, having said that, I highly, highly suggest that you never walk away from your lasers. Have um, Keep an eye on the lasering that's happening, especially if you're cutting material. I don't think it's as much of a concern if you are engraving because you're not um, burning the wood as much. But if you're cutting material, I'd highly suggest that you never walk away from a project because there is that possibility of a fire. And another thing that I emphasize, do not do this inside unless you have some enclosure that can completely suck out all of the smoke. And if you are cutting other materials like plastics or things like that, you definitely don't want those fumes to be indoors. So use 
safety and precaution, especially as you do have a laser. Use eye protection as well, and Jakota does send um, glasses that you can wear, but it also has this hood right here that will protect your eyes uh, when you're looking at the laser that's cutting material. But you do want to be careful wearing those glasses in addition to this hood, I think is a way to just protect your eyesight. Another safety feature is if you tilt this, uh, for whatever reason while it's running, it will automatically shut off. So I do appreciate the safety features that are available in this. And after I put this together, I did go ahead and run some tests and was able to make some preliminary uh, cuts, engraving, as well as um, this coaster. Uh, I just tested out what uh, photographs might look like or images might look like, and it turned out really well. Now, as you can see here, and this is probably an issue of not using the air pump, but um, there was some flare-up marks around here. And you do need to be careful because this image here is so fine and so close that it is really hard to remove some of these sections without pulling off entire sections that aren't intended to do so. So that is one thing that you need to take into consideration is that not all designs that you find are gonna work on your laser because again, here the design is, I think would work much better where you're just having line art like this piece over here versus the cutouts that you find in a piece like this. So that's gonna be true for any laser that isn't just Jakota, but um, overall, you just need to know what you're getting into any kind of lasering. Now, one of the criticisms that I do have about this laser is that it doesn't have a ton of documentation in terms of setup. And in fact, when I was first initially hooking this up to Lightburn, which is the software that I use for all of my lasering projects, I had to correspond with the manufacturer in order to put the settings correctly so that it would register with this machine. And I'm gonna go ahead and put up on the screen right now some of the settings that I had to put in in order to make this work. In addition, you definitely should uh, check off this box here so that the location of the burn is actually happening to where you have it in light burn. Otherwise, it's gonna just start burning wherever this head is located at the time you press start. So those are just some of the things that you have to keep in mind, but again, I think that's gonna be common for a lot of other of these cheaper diode lasers. One of the other things that's a little bit different from this one is you do need to hook up your computer to this machine. Um, I, at least I couldn't figure out a way to put the files into the micro SD card that goes into the front of this. Instead, um, I did use a USB cable to hook up to my laptop in order to run the files. So just know that limitation uh, before purchasing this one. The Creality 10 watt laser that I did a review for, check that out here. Uh, that one, you could actually put the file onto an SD card and it would print without you needing to hook up to your laptop. But in this one, you do need to have it hooked up to your computer when you're running the files. Otherwise, I am pretty happy with it being able to cut. This is um, about three millimeter hardboard and uh, which requires a little bit more to cut through than I found the basswood or birchwood that you can get. So the fact that it can uh, cut through this is a good sign and as well, um, as you can see here, the engraving also is really good too. And it does come with its own proprietary software that you can use, a program if you don't want to pay for Lightburn. Lightburn does have a one month free trial that you can use before purchasing. If I remember correctly, I think Lightburn is anywhere between 80, maybe uh, over $100. I can't quite remember because it's been a while since I bought it. But I found Lightburn to be universally easy to use. They're constantly updating. So I use that program, but you are able to use the um, program that is included with Jakoda. I didn't try it at all just because I know Lightburn is really easy to use. But uh, if you don't want to mess with that, this does come with its own software. Now, one thing I do need to say also is that diode lasers cannot cut clear material. With my CO2 laser, I am able to cut into clear acrylic or plexi and make some miniature trays as well as some light up signs. But with diode lasers, you really can't cut into acrylic unless it is colored and darkly colored at that. Uh, something to do with diode lasers, it just can't cut into clear material like a CO2 laser can. 
Otherwise, I'm pretty happy with this machine and can recommend it. Go ahead and use links below. I do have Amazon affiliate links and that will kick back some money towards me if you do purchase through those links and it doesn't cost you anything extra. Also, check out the links for the pump as well as this honeycomb, which I think is super handy and helpful. And for about $500, I think this is a relatively good deal. Please hit the like button and subscribe. I'm gonna be coming out with even more videos reviewing other lasers and products, and we'll be showing you some more game-related projects that you can use a laser for. So happy lasering. We'll see you next time.